It's the dream of almost anyone that has spent measurable days of their lives playing football manager, taking an obscure club to continental glory. But sometimes this dream can happen in real life. This is Heidenheim, nestled in the rural hills of southern Germany. It's an old town with evidence of settlement before the Roman Empire in 1300 BC and is home to roughly 50,000 Swabians. Swabia is the unofficial name of this region from the day of the Duchy of Swabia in medieval times. And speaking of medieval times, these houses and this castle look like something straight out of a movie set in those days. This is Hallenstein Castle, which dates back to the 12th century. This version here was built in the 16th century. And it is also in this adorable German town where you can find cute churches, giant wind turbines, and FC Heidenheim, a club most football experts expected to be relegated from the Bundesliga at this point, not preparing for continental competition. And because everything in today's German football world revolves around Bayer Leverkusen, you can thank the newly minted giants of German football for this video even happening. In fact, you can unofficially thank them for this graphic you're seeing on your screen right now. Mugen Kamentieren Abonieren Danke! Now, before we begin, Heidenheim's underdog story begins well past this past season. And yes, you can thank Leverkusen a little bit for them getting into Europe. It's a fun story to tell, as we'll hear later on. But this is also the story of a club that did it the right way, without oil money, without energy drink money, but rather, this is a club that has benefited from the smart decisions of one man. Now, the club that we know today as first football club, Heidenheim 1846, would split from Heidenheimer SB in 2007, becoming its own separate football club. At the time this happened, they were playing in the fifth tier of German football, which was just about the highest level the club had been at after spending most of its existence anywhere between the fifth and seventh level. But even before Heidenheim changed its name, things were trending up for the club. They were promoted to the fifth tier in 2004, and they needed just one season to rise to the fourth tier, and they wouldn't spend very long there either. It took Heidenheim just one season to win the Regional Liga sued in 2009 and get promoted to the third Liga. And did the highest ever level Heidenheim played intimidate them? Not in the slightest. In their five seasons in three Liga, they would always finish in the upper half, but there would not be a sixth season in three Liga. That's because they won the whole damn thing in 2014 to get promoted to the second Bundesliga, where they would remain for the next nine seasons. But don't let that last part take away from the fact that climbing up three rungs of the German ladder within the past seven seasons is really freaking impressive. But at the same time, though, another German club that's much more famous was actually surging even faster. And in 2014, the same year that Heidenheim got promoted and won the league, this team finished second behind them and you definitely know who they are if you follow football. RB Leipzig effectively replaced SVV Markranstadt in 2009 in Germany's fifth tier. Backed by energy drink giant Red Bull, the club controversially surged even faster than Heidenheim, needing seven seasons to reach the top tier of German football, the Bundesliga, and not long after that, the Champions League. Now, RB Leipzig launched like a rocket up the German pyramid because of heavy financial investment. But to be fair, unlike Chelsea, they spent that money wisely. No, no, I'm not just going to pick on Chelsea here. You can also look at Reading as an example of big investment, not necessarily meaning big success. If you want to hear their story, you can click on the link in the top right of this video. But in Heidenheim, there was no big money investor to help the club take off into Europe. If Heidenheim was the rocket, it was Frank Schmidt that was the engine that helped them soar. Schmidt is a native son of Heidenheim and played four seasons there to end his playing career in the mid-2000s. This came after spending five seasons of a 15-year career with Alemannia Aachen in the second Bundesliga. Schmidt was hired as manager shortly after FC Heidenheim split from Heidenheimer SB. His playing career had just ended with Heidenheimer SB and with no other coaching experience to speak of besides a short stint as the assistant in Heidenheim, the newly named club put their faith in their native son and promoted him after sacking their old coach. 
Mark Schnatterer served as captain of Heidenheim from 2008 to 2021 and was certainly one of Schmidt's ride or die soldiers. He retired in 2021 and is now an assistant on the Heidenheim under 19s. But regarding Schmidt, Mark told Kicker in 2017, quote, his ambition, his motivation, and also his optimism are three essential characteristics that have brought him to where he is today. But perhaps there's a fourth essential characteristic that defines Frank Schmidt, the loyalty that he shows in his players, and his players show him in return. Schnatterer is just one of many that stayed with Heinheim as they rose through the German pyramid. Schmidt, who doesn't really like to talk about himself much, told The Athletic last year, quote, There are so many people who have been here with me or have been here longer. To do this with the same people, that is what's amazing. And with loyal players means less babysitting and more buying into his coaching. His training philosophy is described by The Athletic as meticulously prepared with a focus on motivation and positioning. He's often described as a tough coach whose uncompromising approach doesn't coddle his players. And yet he's also regarded as fair to his players as well as a great communicator. In fact, Schmidt has drawn favorable comparisons to Jurgen Klopp. Both men began coaching where they ended their playing careers, with Klopp jumping right into the head coaching gig at Mons. Both started their coaching careers at around the same time, and both have a reputation for being close to their players, and both are also renowned as being tactically astute. And yet, no one can deny the results of Schmidt's approach. In fact, it's actually put him in rarefied air as far as modern coaches go. He's the longest tenured gaffer in not just Europe's five major leagues, but in the top two tiers of each of Germany, England, France, Spain, and Italy. He's also the longest tenured head coach of a single club in German football history, which he accomplished in September of 2023 when he passed Volker Fink's 16 years of service at Freiburg. So we've walked our way up through Heidenheim's history to 2023. We told you about the man that is making this rags to riches story happen, and now it's time to tell the recent story of how Heidenheim qualified for European competition. And this final chapter in the amazing story of Heidenheim begins at the end of the second Bundesliga season in 2023. Just work with me here, we're getting there. Heading into the final weekend of the season, Heidenheim clung onto a promotion slot for dear life, sandwiched between Darmstadt and a Hamburg team with an easy matchup on paper against relegated Sandhausen. Heidenheim's task was also easy on paper, playing at the other relegated club that season, Jan Regensburg. But rarely is football that black and white. Hamburg dispatched Sandhausen easily, but heading into the 90th minute of their match, Heidenheim was losing 2-1. to one. And that's where Frank Schmidt, the motivator, takes center stage. In an interview with The Athletic, Schmidt says one of his players, a down and gone Jan Nicholas Besta, went to him and said he was finished. Schmidt told Besta, quote, Nicky will do it. We will do it. You have to believe in it. Four minutes later, the shaggy-faced winger took a penalty kick to tie the match 2-2 in stoppage time. And minutes after that, with the sands of the hourglass trickling down to almost nothing, this happened. Tim Kleindienst, who bagged an incredible 25 goals in the second Bundesliga campaign, scored the most important of the campaign to not just send little Heidenheim into the Bundesliga, but also win them the second Bundesliga title. A tremendous achievement for a club based in a town of about 50,000 people in southern Germany without a nearby urban area, and a club who was just in the fifth tier of German football about 15 years earlier. But the experts did not rate Heidenheim's chances in the Bundesliga this season. Many expected the small club to be candidates for relegation rather than European competition, with a 31.5% chance of finishing bottom two. Even so-called 
and experts on YouTube did not rate Heidenheim's chances for survival either. These are just a handful of examples, and I do apologize for the two punchable faces you see there on the bottom. And it looked like those predictions might have come to fruition based on Heidenheim's form through the end of November with just three wins and a draw. Perhaps astonishingly enough, this form only left Heidenheim in 13th at the table heading into December, with Bochum, Darmstadt, Mons, Unan Berlin, and Kulin faring much worse. And this would be about as low as Heidenheim would be in the table all season. They did dip as low as 14th a couple weeks later, but generally staying in the safe and cozy mid-table for most of the season. Not really in any fear of being relegated, but Europe still seemed very, very unlikely. And this was for a couple of reasons. For one, it didn't seem like Heidenheim would really pull itself out of this mid-table quagmire that they were in. And I think most Heidenheim fans would not have minded that at all. They were just happy to be in the Bundesliga for the first time ever. But the other part of this unlikely tale is the European slots themselves. Because Borussia Dortmund dispatched Paris Saint-Germain in the Champions League semifinals, that actually gave the Bundesliga an extra Champions League slot. And this actually ensured Dortmund would be back into Champions League next season as they finished fifth, claiming that last slot that they themselves created. And then the German club with a severe allergy to losing this season, never losing themselves. Well, except for the Europa League final. We, we don't talk about that. Beat second Bundesliga side FC Kaiserslautern in the Pokal final. And because of Bayer Leverkusen's delightful double, an extra Europa League slot went to the Bundesliga as well. Meaning, through a domino effect, eighth place would actually be good enough to clinch a Europa Conference League berth in the Bundesliga. But the Pokal would happen after the league finished up. So this wasn't even a goal that Heidenheim was necessarily even gunning for. And yet it didn't stop them from having a wild final month and a half to put themselves in position for this pivotal spot. It started with a wild 3-3 slugfest with eventual second place finisher Stuttgart on March 31st. Heidenheim's western neighbors had a 2-0 lead after 52 minutes, but Stuttgart's little neighbors to the east would score three unanswered, including two Tim Kleindien skulls in the 84th and 85th minute. Nothing stops this train. Nothing. To set Heidenheim up for an improbable road upset, but a Nikola Dovdan red card in the 96th minute led to Stuttgart equalizing in the dying embers. One week later at their home sweet home of Voith Arena, Heidenheim left Bayern Munich face palming themselves after the match. Stop me if you've heard this before. After Heidenheim rallied from being 2-0 down. And just like at Stuttgart, it was Tim Kleindienst who came up with the game tying and game winning goal in the second half. And suddenly it was easy to forget that this was a small club in the middle of nowhere in southern Germany that appeared more worried about relegation than Europe in the recent past. But a draw at Bochum and a loss at home to Leipzig kept Heidenheim at 10th, and a win at relegation doomed Darmstadt did not pull them up the table, nor did a draw against Mons. Heading into week 33, Heidenheim was in 10th place in the table and had a road test with 7th place Freiburg. 8th place Hoffenheim hosted Leipzig and 9th place Augsburg had to travel to Dortmund. Two tough tests for the two clubs directly above Heidenheim. Now Heidenheim would hold on to a 1-1 draw against a Freiburg team who was fighting to keep its European hopes alive and they played like it, pumping 20 shots towards Heidenheim's way. But Heidenheim held strong. Elsewhere, Hoffenheim drew Leipzig by the same 1-1 one -one score, but Dortmund trounced Augsburg 5-1, meaning heading into the final week, Heidenheim found themselves in ninth place, having leapfrogged Augsburg on goal difference. Hoffenheim surged up to seventh where they would remain, so for the purposes of this graphic, they're off the board. Freiburg dropped to eighth, but still were three points clear of Heidenheim. But ninth, 10th, and 11th were deadlocked on points. Heidenheim and Augsburg have the same goal difference, and Bremen, who are very relevant to this story, are one goal behind heading in 
to the final dramatic weekend. Now for Heinheim to finish in eighth place, they needed to win, have Freiburg lose, and finish with a higher goal difference than Freiburg, as well as Augsburg and Bremen if they were to win their respective matches. Now remember, Leverkusen hadn't won the Pokal yet, so going into this final weekend, Heidenheim wasn't necessarily thinking about Europe yet, but most Heidenheim fans weren't thinking they'd be even in the Bundesliga 15 years ago. So Frank Schmidt and his players have just done the work up to this point and have let the fortune come in as it may. And on this final weekend, they would need some fortune to go their way. Now, Heidenheim had no problems in their final match, sending FC Kulin down to the second Bundesliga in a convincing 4-1 fashion. And that plus three goal difference in that match alone turns out to be pretty gosh darn important. We'll get to that in a bit. Freiburg traveled to Union Berlin, who were fighting to stay out of the 16th place relegation playoffs. All Freiburg had to do was not lose an eighth place, and Europa Conference League qualification was theirs. And after 91 minutes, Freiburg looked like they were going to draw Berlin, but then... Fortune finds Heidenheim yet again as a PK goes off the post, but is rebounded right back in, leaving Freiburg with no points and looking up at Heidenheim in the standings, their European dreams crushed. Meanwhile, Augsburg became Never Losen's last Bundesliga victim as Xabi Alonso's Leverkusen boys coasted to a 2-1 win to give them the trophy and give Augsburg an 11th place finish even below Freiburg. With Freiburg and Augsburg's fate sealed, this leaves Werder Bremen as the last threat to Heidenheim. They hosted Bochum, who did end up in 16th place and having to survive relegation by the skin of their own teeth in the relegation playoff. Bremen needed to win big to pass Heidenheim, and had they actually done that, this might have been a Bremen video instead, because Bremen just a few years ago were relegated themselves out of the Bundesliga for the first time in a long time, possibly even ever and they were promoted right back into the Bundesliga just two seasons ago, and they had not played in European continental competition since the 2000s. So them going back to Europe would have been a story in of itself. The final score was Werder Bremen four, Bochum one, which in any other year might have punched their ticket to the Europa Conference League as well with that kind of goal difference. They certainly did enough to press Freiburg and Augsburg, but not enough to pass Heidenheim. Bremen would have needed two more goals to pass Heidenheim on goal difference due to tiebreakers, but Heidenheim's big 4-1 win over Kulin was enough to secure eighth place, their absolute highest finish of any point of this season. And as they would learn in a couple weeks, thanks to Leverkusen, this would be good enough to qualify this little club for the Europa League Conference next season. But this means in 15 years, Heidenheim will have gone from playing teams like SSV, Rutlingen, Waldhof, Mannheim, and the second clubs of Stuttgart, Freiburg, and Hoffenheim to playing the spending money like drunken sailors Chelsea, recent league Un winners Lons, recent Copa del Rey winners Real Betis, and Europa Conference League merchants Fiorentina. Quarantina, who have finished runner-up in the last two years in the Europa Conference League. Plus, they'll be in a competition with over a hundred other clubs around Europe that are either the biggest club in their developing countries or are strong sides in their own right. A big opportunity for a club who was just tasting top division football for the first time. And it's stories like this that make us fans of our hometown clubs where we dream of glory no matter how big or small our clubs are. And unlike a team like RB Leipzig, who needed an endless bank account from Red Bull to soar up the German pyramid, Heidenheim just needed one man to believe and one man to guide this team from nowhere to Europe. And when the colds of winter blow into southern Germany and the people of Heidenheim gather at the tavern for warmth and good company, they will sing songs and share tales of Frank Schmidt for generations to come, no matter what happens from here.
Let me know what you thought of this video in the comments below and make sure to like and subscribe for more footy tales like this one. Also, if I butchered any German pronunciations, please let me know about that as well. I did my best, but while I may be German in ancestry, I'm not German by birth. And if you enjoy tales of German football underdogs, maybe you enjoy this tale right up here of another German football underdog that almost won the Pokal this year. By the way, this club that I'm pointing at right now, they actually faced Heidenheim 10 years ago in the third Liga. Heidenheim won 2-1, by the way. I bet you couldn't guess that.